The technology behind the movement of cargo may not have changed a great deal over the past few years, but there is more interest from regulators in monitoring maritime fleets. But how else can this information be used? We caught up with Inmarsat, the largest provider of fleet broadband services, and Bloomberg News in London, who use near time shipping data to track trade stories, principally for the finance industry. So Inmarsat has been providing satellite communications to the shipping world for over 30 years now, having originally been set up to provide maritime safety and distress services. Um, Inmarsat has branched out and now provides. Um, commercial communication services to over 90% of the world's um, commercial fleets. Um, our latest generation of products is the fleet broadband range which provides um, technology and communications to shipping customers for both operational and crew benefits to over 36,000 vessels um, in today's market. Um, the, with our range of products um, going from the FB150 all the way up to the FB500, we've got a, a large variety of uh, technologies and products to meet the, the demands of both operational and, and crew benefits for shipping companies throughout the world. Then we continually monitor all of the networks that we provide and all of the services that we cover. Um, by doing that, we look at each of the ocean regions for our fleet broadband service and look at the different traffic that we have passing in each of those regions. Um, in each of the regions, we split it up into a series of spot beams which allow us to provide the greatest um, capacity and greatest resiliency within the network. On the map, we can see a series of different coloured spot beams which relates to the different amount of users and the different traffic that we've got passing. The, the lighter green spot beams are our standard beams where we have users passing traffic and the, the denser the green in colour the higher the, uh, the number of users that we have in each of these areas. Um, and then the, the blue areas that you can see represent areas where at the moment there are no fleet broadband customers looking to, to utilise the network. With, within this ocean region some of the greatest areas of density can be seen around the Straits of Malacca which will echo the, uh, the main shipping lanes around the world. We're quite interested in or we have been interested for a while in what's going on at Karg Island, which is a, a crude oil loading terminal in Iran. Um, last year, the European Union banned the purchase and insurance of Iranian oil cargoes, and so it became very interesting to see what effect that would have on Iran's oil exports. So, uh, as an example, we will keep an eye on what's coming and going from that terminal, um, see how many ships are going, what their carrying capacity is, where they go next, and, and um, try to kind of glean information like that. So, for example, if, if we, what I've just done here is look at the loadings over a given period from Carg Island, and you can see that all of these, all of these blue squares represent one or more um, crude oil tankers that have been to Carg Island during that, that period of time. Um, and then we can go into the underlying data, which is very useful, um, and calculate what the transportation capacity of that would be. Now, n these ships here, for example, uh, would be called very large crude carriers, able to carry about two million barrels of oil. Uh, these ones would be um, called Suez Max tankers, able to carry one million, and so on and so on. Um, once we look at the depth of those ships in the water, we can work out how much oil they might be able to carry. Now, if you're a, 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 an oil trader or um, you know, a, a, somebody interested in the shipping industry, that's, that's very interesting and useful information for you. Uh, and then, going, if you go back to the map, you can see where those ships are in the world. Boeing is in the process of building three Inmarsat 5 satellites as part of a $1.2 billion worldwide wireless broadband network called Inmarsat Global Express. The first is scheduled for completion in 2013, with full global coverage expected by the end of 2014. The satellites will operate at the KA band in the range of 20 to 30 gigahertz. Global Express will deliver download speeds in excess of 60 megabits per second to a 60 centimeter dish. So we'll truly have a connected world, whether you're at land or at sea.